You will never become a chess grandmaster. At least, if you do not break these three bad habits. Today, I will be giving you your three worst habits that are most likely holding you back from becoming a grandmaster and what you can do to fix them. Like and subscribe if you enjoy and comment down below the biggest habit that I missed. The first and undoubtedly biggest habit that you need to break is not looking at your opponent's vision. Paying attention to what your opponent is doing is a crucial step in ensuring that you can win your games. It is very important to make sure that you have a good plan and that you are preparing for the rest of the game, such as creating a potential attack on the king or the possibility to win a piece. Well, that will not work if the opponent is simultaneously doing the same or even much worse to you. So what do you need to do in order to fix this habit? It's pretty simple. Right after the opponent makes a move, you need to carefully consider what exactly that move does for the opponent. Does it attack one of your pieces? Does it just develop a piece? What plan does it have? And also, make sure that you're not only looking at the opponent's piece that moves. Look at what potential attacks have been revealed or anything else that could happen to the pieces around it. Only then should you then look at your own plans to determine if your plan will be better than theirs or if your plan simultaneously refutes their attack. This is a very difficult skill to fully implement into your games, and when you first try to implement it, you might be a bit inconsistent with it. Personally, this is still a skill that I really struggle with, but I have been trying my best to break this bad habit. This skill is also very, very beneficial in openings that your opponent plays that you might not be familiar with, especially in gambits. If you are not familiar with an opening that your opponent is playing, you're obviously probably not going to be in the main line for very long. But what you have to do to defend your position when your opponent has a clear advantage and is likely familiar with the position they find themselves in and very comfortable, you need to keep track of their plans and what they are going to do in the future in order to protect yourself during the opening and get yourself to survive to the middle game. If you can fully keep track and predict what your opponent is going to do in the future, you will have a huge advantage over them and most likely are going to dominate them later in the game. The second bad habit that you need to break if you want to achieve your full potential and possibly reach the rank of Grandmaster is to stop not analyzing your games after every single one that you play. The current tools that we have access to now to thoroughly analyze our games are invaluable. We are so lucky that we have the tools that we have access to. Former chess legends, like for example, Bobby Fischer, could have only dreamt of having these resources that we have access to now. So, since we are so lucky, we should definitely take advantage of them. But what exactly should you be looking for and paying attention to when you are analyzing your games? The first point, openings. You start every game with an opening, so you should obviously get those openings down. Pay attention to moves like when you left theory, what exactly you might have done wrong, what opportunities you missed, or when you didn't pay attention to your opponent's plans. Learn why you made mistakes, fully understand, and put yourself into the position. Analyzing openings and seeing the mistakes that you made in them is the best way to learn and master an opening completely. If you don't analyze your games and realize the mistakes that you're making in them, you're never going to improve with an opening, and you will certainly never master it. The second point that you should be looking at, your biggest Blunders. Blunders are undoubtedly the biggest mistakes that you are making in your games, so you need to pay attention to them. To improve, you need to learn from your mistakes. Learn why exactly the move that you made was a blunder. Maybe you just hung a piece, very obvious. But if you do not know exactly right away why the move you made is a blunder, you need to not only identify why it is a blunder, but truly understand why it is a blunder. Truly understanding why every blunder that you make is a blunder will help you learn to not make those same blunders in the future. Like I said, maybe you just hung a piece, maybe you even just misclicked. That's fine, but you need to truly understand why it's a blunder. Learning from your mistakes is undoubtedly the best way to improve. The third and final point that you should be looking at in analysis, your end games. End games are very principled because they are some of the most simple yet important positions that you will find yourself in. Because there are so few pieces on the board, they are often more predictable and simple to digest so they should be one of the first things that you truly, truly master. First thing you want to do is figure out if the position and the end game that you are in is dead loss, a draw, or a win. If you were in a dead loss position, maybe find a way to possibly make it a draw. Maybe the, if the opponent isn't paying attention, they could stalemate. And if it's a draw, don't just sacrifice position and put yourself in an opportunity where you could lose, but do put yourself in an opportunity, if possible, that the opponent could blunder and just hand you the win. If you have the opportunity, you should take it. Analyzing these endgames will help you learn all the different types of endgames that exist. Maybe just king and pawn endgames, king, pawn, and rooks, king and two bishops, how to checkmate like that, maybe a king and one pawn learning how to do opposition. But learning endgames through analysis is very, very crucial. Like I said, analysis is a very important tool, and the best way to learn and improve is to learn from your mistakes. The last bad habit that you need to break is to never resign. I know, 
Never resigning might seem not very gentlemanly, as the chess players that we are, but if you truly want to win more games and possibly become a grandmaster, you should not resign nearly as much as you probably do now. I'll give you one example. Earlier today, I was in a position dead lost. I was hoping that there was a possibility my opponent could have lost on time, or maybe given me a stalemate. But I got lucky. My opponent blundered his bishop, and it was dead even now. And then, he blundered his queen. If I would have resigned once I was in a dead lost position, I would have lost 8 or so elo. But because I stayed, and I persevered, and I stuck with it, I ended up winning the game. So you should do a similar thing. If you're in a position that's dead lost, try to make a ballsy play, see if your opponent will miss it, or give you an opportunity to take the lead. If you're gonna lose anyway, you might as well try. Also, there is a slight chance that maybe your opponent's Wi-Fi kicks out, I don't know, they have to go feed their pet worm, anything, and they can't continue the game. And not resigning in a dead lost position could be the singular reason why you win that game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something. Comment down below the biggest tip that I missed, and I will see you next time. Peace.